Uh, that's going to be difficult, and that's only going to be shown when your studies are out. But one of the things I'd like to point out is that a lot of the studies in the past have shown that good control in the beginning of diabetes shows up as beneficial effects many years later. Even if the glucose control or other control factors are, are not different, good control at any point really helps. And I think it's important to recognize in the first one or two years, your two groups were really distinctly different as far as weight and fitness. So I, I think even if there isn't a big numerical advantage at the end of four or five or you want 13 years, I think we're going to see some effect, but obviously the results are going to have to come in for that from the study itself. I agree totally with what you said. There's just one other point that we haven't made that we should, which is that probably our single strongest effects are on HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. Yes. There we got improvements actually in both arms, both the intensive lifestyle and the diabetes support and education had increases in their HDL cholesterol, but they were far greater in the intensive lifestyle intervention, and the difference between the two arms has been sustained for all four years. It didn't get smaller over time. And the difference we've shown in HDL cholesterol in other large trials has been sufficient to actually lead to differences in cardiovascular mortality. So our, our, um, prob you know, one of our strongest benefits may be by doing the intensive lifestyle intervention involving weight loss and physical activity maybe through its effects on HDL cholesterol. Right, and that's one of the things that clinicians have found is one of the most difficult things to improve is HDL. So when we look at the uh, changes you're doing, somebody might say, well, I could lower the blood pressure with adding another drug, and which might be true, but it's very difficult to raise HDL, and that's a very important com uh, component. Uh, by the way, with one other thing, was there any, um, maybe, I'm sure you would have said this in your paper, but maybe you didn't get a chance to put it in or you know, there's a reason. Was there an age at which it didn't seem to, the, the intensive lifestyle intervention didn't seem to work, uh, uh, people yeah. were too old to, work, to go along or too young that they didn't want to do it? Was there any effective age there? There is an effective age on the weight losses. That's actually the only part we've looked at. And there it's interesting because what we find is that the older individuals do better. Wow. They lose the most weight and keep it off better. And I think people have said, well, there may be a couple of reasons. Maybe they have more time. They may be retired, have more time to be physically active. They may also be more um, aware of the health problems that can occur with diabetes, maybe a little more afraid, a little more motivated. I think that's a very important point, and it's almost counterintuitive. One would say, well, as you get older, you're not going to uh, adhere, you're not going to do the exercise, and you're finding just the exact opposite, opposite, which tells you that it is never too late to work on diabetes and improve diabetes control and all those risk factors. So I think that's a, that's a very important study. Well, I think at this point uh, we've uh, kind of come to the end of our time. Uh, I don't see any more questions that are up there right now that uh, we could uh, asked for. So I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Wink, for your study, and I hope to talk to you again in another nine years uh, <laughs> when the study comes to a successful conclusion thank and you. we get a chance to talk about this. So I want to thank you very much uh, for participating today in your insight and your discussions. And uh, if there's anybody else who has a final question out there, you can put it in, but uh, if I don't see one, I'm going to thank everybody for listening in on today's, as I said, inaugural e-journal diabetes session. Thank you very much. Uh, goodbye, everybody. This concludes today's e-journal club. As a reminder, if you're interested in obtaining CME CE credit for the session, please complete the post-test and evaluation that will appear on the screen when the session concludes. Your statement of credit will be available for download on the eJournal Club page as soon as you have met the CME CE requirements. Visit iPointofCare.org today. iPointofCare.org allows users to quickly search a variety of diabetes resources, find answers to point of care questions, and obtain CME credit. Register now and start finding answers to the most important questions about diabetes. The Alliance for CME has recognized iPoint of Care with its 2010 award for outstanding industry supported CME activity. Please join us next please join us for next month's Diabetes E Journal Club on Tuesday, April 5th at 12:15 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for attending.